Hello there, my name's Mark Kingsnorth and I'd like to show you today how to create quite cool looking nebula effects in Blender using Blender's Cycles node texture system. Uh, so you can see the effect here actually projected onto the world background. So if I hit Shift F to pan the camera, you can move around uh, the nebula quite quickly as well. It's quite quick to render, which is always very, very useful. And I've projected it onto the background here, but uh, you could project it onto 3D planes uh, and um, uh, do all sorts of different types of effects with it. Um, so uh, the node setup is here. It looks quite um, daunting, but I'm just going to show you the simple techniques I use to build up um, uh, something like this. So let's start from the beginning. Uh, let's start with a new Blender file. And let's delete the default cube that appears. And if you move into the compositing view here, you'll get the viewport background by selecting rendered shading, and it shows you sort of a a uh, very boring grey background here. Um, if you change into the Cycles rendering engine and uh, in the node editor here click the shader uh, node tree type and then select the world to project the nodes onto the background and if you click use nodes the nodes will appear here that control the background here. So here I can change uh, it's a black background. So let's begin. So first of all you want to create um, a very basic sort of cloud effect using the noise node texture. So if, oops, sorry, a bit quick there. If I hit Shift A, click Search, type in Noise, get the Noise Texture node here. And if I take the colour output of that and hook it up to the background colour here, I'll get a very sort of colourful cloud effect, which if you hit Shift F here, you can move around and that's okay. So it's looking like um, some colourful clouds, some very basic colourful clouds. Um, but you want a lot more control over this. Um, you want to sort of control the colour to start with. Okay, so um, you can control the colour of the clouds by um, adding a colour ramp in the middle the uh, connectors here. And what that will do is assign different colours to the different levels of, of noise that are output um, by this node here. And so here it's just black and white because it's black to white here. But what you can do is you change the white colour to say sort of an orangey colour here. So you could maybe reduce the reduce the brightness a little bit. Get this little orangey Type cloud here. You can also increase the amount of black that is that is output here, and then make it make the actual sort of clouds look a little bigger bigger by actually counterintuitively reducing the scale value down to let's take it down to about, ooh, about two point five. So and increase the detail value to its maximum, which is sixteen to create lots of detailed wisps in the clouds. So that's looking like something, sort of orange cloud background. Mm, that's okay. Um, the next thing you want to do is you want you want sort of to mix colours together, especially in a nebula. So what you do that is actually by mixing two noise effects together. If I select these two nodes that I've created here by hitting shift, and then if I hit shift D can duplicate the noise effect here. Um, you want to mix these two effects together with something called a mix RGB node. You can insert that into the middle here. It's just mixing it with white now. But if I hook this colour output to this colour input here, I'm mixing the two together, it's not doing much here at the moment because it's just mixing the same noise effect together. If I hit screen, I'm going to mix them in a slightly right away, it's just a different algorithm for mixing it together. Increase the function so it fully mixes colour 2 with colour 1, just giving a little variety effect. So what you can do here is a little trick, is if you change the scale just slightly to say, I don't know, 2.9 or something like that, 
sort of moves the noise effect across and is mixing them in different in different positions now. And if I change the colour of the cloud to say I don't know sort of blue, but you can choose uh, something going something starting to happen here now. There's sort of orangey and blue mixed together and around that. Yeah, it's something. It's not. It's not the this end result yet. Um, so that will do for now. You could add the, add, add a third, but I think two. I find two or three mixes work quite well here. Um, so what you want to do to start creating, selling this sort of nebula effect a lot more is um, highlighting different parts of the nebula with sort of very sort of bright lights that would have per would permeate through the nebula from star clusters uh, and that sort of thing. Um, so you do that by a very similar technique. So if I add, a, add another uh, texture mode here, add another ramp mode up here. And connect these together. And if you, in, in the latest versions of Blender, if you hit Control and Shift, you'll see the end result of that. Just this group of nodes here. Um, you can sort of start to, sort of to say, well, I'll highlight bright parts of the nebula with these bits of noise. So it doesn't look too impressive yet, but bear with me. Um, uh, we'll leave it at that for now. So. And then you want to mix this with the, the cloud effect that's being output here. So you add in a mix RGB node again here. And it's just from the, and the, and it's just the shade you see the output here. It's just mixing it with white now. If I mix it with the, the, the noise effect I've created here, it starts to mix the blue, the, the blue and the orange with the white. Not very pretty right now. I change this to screen though, it's just a different algorithm for mixing the colours. Increase the function so it fully mixes colour two with colour one. And it's starting to screw. Oh, actually selected to dodge. Ah, something's happening now here, so uh, there's bright parts of the if I reduce it to zero, you can't see them mixed. Right. Also, if I increase it to so if it fully mixes with the bright parts, there's something starting to happen here. It's not quite the effect you want yet, but it's starting to get some detail to it. I really sort of increase the white bit a little bit, start to give you those brighter parts of the, of the nebula. Let's just, let's just keep it yeah, down to that for now, for the moment. So again, it's not quite selling it. Oh, there's something going on over there, but it's not, it's not sort of the exact effect you want. Uh, so what you want to do here now is to create um, a, a function map that will feed into this, this, this factor here that will, that will actually only tell Blender just to highlight edges of clouds. Uh, and you can do that again with using a colour ramp. So you select the colour ramp here, let's move it over here, and use um, uh, very similar, uh, you know, uh, a way of using this colour ramp to select different parts of the cloud. So, without further ado, I'll hook that up over here. This is just the, cl the cloud output here. I hit control shift just to see that it's just sort of turned into black and white. But what I can do by adjusting the colour ramp is by dragging the white over here and highlighting sort of parts of the cloud. And here, if I hit control and add an, another anchor point here and turn that to black, what starts to happen, i drag it over here, as you can, if you can see, Edges, edges of clouds start to start to get highlighted. So let's see. I can use the output of this, coloured output of this, to feed into the function here. So if I do that, so if I set the view here, I can use this output to feed into the mix here. There's something happening here. 
I'm going to be brighten it. Brighten it with that a bit. And ah, something's happening here, isn't it? So, you start to see the brighter parts. So the stars are starting to seep through the nebula. So, you want to sort of balance it so many parts of the planet are being turned into three. You can do that by adjusting parts of the the ramp effect subtly with different subtle effects. That's quite good. Let's leave it at that for a moment. So by panning around, you can start to see there and there's this bit of a interesting effects are starting to appear, more nebula like. Uh, perhaps you want to perhaps increase sort of the blend of the colours a bit more. See what that looks like. Okay, let's leave it that for the moment. So, um, that's that's the main effect actually. But what you actually want is some stars. So there's lots of interesting ways. I'm sure you can create stars. I'm just going to do a very basic effect here, which is using a different uh, node called the Varano texture. So it's, it's a noise type texture. So it's very again a very similar technique. You add a ramp node to it. Connect it up. You hit Control Shift see just that part. It doesn't look much like stars at the moment, but if I, if I reverse the colour ramp, it starts to look like bubbles. Then if you reduce the colour ramp, the black node here, you start to see it there. If I increase the scale of the Voronoi texture, lots of stars. I really reduce so there's a lot of black in it. You can see lots of stars there. And again, I can add in a mix node to mix those stars in. Let's just do that. At the end, just mixing completely with white here, but if I drag it down over here and change the mix type this time to add. Ah, stars are mixed in. And you don't want these black parts really to mix the stars. So again, you finally you use a very similar technique. You add a colour ramp around about here, and then take the output before the stars are mixed to this colour ramp. And try and shift it. And you just see these are the bits that the stars are going to mix in with. So if I just move that into that factor point, only the stars will be mixed in sort of the background. And you can increase the amount that the stars are mixed. There, so you should be able to see that. And that is pretty much it. Um, so hopefully you can see how you can create all sorts of different types of effect using these techniques. You can pan around. You can sort of find sort of interesting parts to, uh, to select, and then you could adjust adjust different parts of the colour ramp. Probably maybe add different colours to it. Um, uh, you could make the ramps more detailed uh, and such like to create all sorts of interesting effects, which are fast too, fast to render. Um, okay, well I hope you enjoyed that. Um, uh, and I shall see you later.